Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter two talking about the test management and continuing with 2.3 risk-based testing and other approaches for test prioritization and effort allocation. As a part of this, we are talking about the last segment that is test prioritization and effort allocation in the test process. In order to further understand, we have actually covered a lot of important things which we are supposed to know in order to uh, prioritize the test cases, understand different techniques and approaches which can be followed, and of course elaborated a lot on the risk-based testing. But of course, what happens in case what technique do you follow, you know, no matter what approaches do you follow, how do you really practice them within the test process? That is also equally important. So no matter whatever technique or better yet mix of the techniques whatever you're trying to use that a test manager makes use of the test manager must incorporate that technique into the project and the test process it's just not that important that you do all the set of planning and you never apply them at the right place of course you should know at what point of time the technique will be best applicable and at what point the test executions must begin in order to mitigate those kind of things and of course have a good outcome from the testing. Now, for example, in a sequential life cycle model, for example, V, V model, the test team selects the test, allocates the test effort, and initially prioritizes the test during the requirement phase itself with periodic adjustments whenever, wherever they see any kind of, you know, substitutes in the requirement or probably they talk about any kind of execution outcomes, you can definitely move in. And there are many other factors which you can consider from the point of the test environment, from the top point of the, uh, the, the criticality of a module which you identify during the further planning and preparation. Whereas in a tra iterative or agile life cycle, it requires an iteration by iteration approach. Things are different in different iterations. Probably in sprint one, you had some of the issues which you identified. Then sprint two might have a different set of prioritization being followed in order to make use of it. So have a look on that and then keep prioritizing accordingly every single sprint. Now, in our case, during the test planning and the control, must consider the degree to the which the risk, requirement, and or usage profiles will evolve and respond accordingly. So, must consider all the factors which will be contributing to your overall uh, test prioritization and make use of them at the right point of time. During the test analysis, design, and implementation, the allocation and prioritization determined during test planning must be applied. So right here, right from the moment you start analyzing the requirements and start writing the test cases, you can start implementing the prioritization which you determine during the planning phase itself. Because during the planning, you might have determined some of the approaches or the strategy which you selected for your process. Then according to that, you give priority to those requirements which you need to analyze first. And of course, create the test cases first for those requirements which are critical or prioritized for you. So don't forget that the requirements can also be prioritized and based on that priority, you can further prioritize the writing of test cases and getting ready for the execution as well. Now it is common breakdown in the test process for careful analysis or modeling to occur only for that information not to be used to guide the test process going forward. This breakdown typically occurs during the design and the implementation. During the test execution, the prioritization determined during the test planning should be carried out as well. Although it is important to update the prioritization periodically based on the information gained after the plan was initially written. Now, of course, a plan is always a plan. But of course, at some point of time, you do realize that you plan for something. But as you're proceeding with your test process, you realize things are slightly getting different than you predicted. So, of course, there's always room to customize your plan and upgrade that or move it to a different way or do move it to a different uh, prioritization statuses depending on the outcomes during the execution. So of course, you can have a blend of risk-based testing with a reactive approach because risk-based testing will tell you what are the risk areas which you have. And of course, the outgoing outcomes of every execution can follow the reactive approach depending on whether that was actually a critical risk or not. 
right? And depending on that, you can further allocate your efforts to those areas where you never identified a risk item at all, and you have a risk item there now. So evolving, the, the execution as it evolves can give you a lot of information to further plan out your things and apply your allocations accordingly. When evaluating and reporting the test results and exit criteria status, the test manager must also evaluate and report in terms of the risk, requirements, usage profiles, checklists, and other guides used to select and prioritize the test. Now, when it comes to the reporting of the execution, generally people do not uh, concentrate other than the execution status, the number of test cases have passed, number of defects reported, number of defects open or resolved, and so many things. But now, what we are saying to you that during this reporting method or reporting approaches, make sure that you also include that what's the status on your risk which you identified, how many of them have mitigated, how many of them were exactly the same, and what is the residual risk and requirements like how much requirement you have covered what requirements are still uncovered or what requirements are associated with uh, severe severe defects which you have find and many other things like that so factors are just not limited you need to identify all those areas which play a vital role in terms of quickly modifying your effort allocation at any point of time to add more value Further to add more, as a part of result reporting and exit criteria evaluation, the test manager can measure the degree to which testing is complete. This should include tracing test cases and discovered defects back to the relevant test pieces. This traceability will add a lot of value that how much testing you have done in order to gain that confidence on a particular requirement. And of course, it also showcases that what effort you put in order to mitigate a particular risk and whether that is enough or you need something more. So during the evaluation of the exit criteria where you decide when to stop testing, you can include these as one of the criteria within the exit criteria itself. So that criterion will definitely add a lot of value that you do not miss anything which is supposed to be measured before you can call off your testing phase. For example, in risk-based testing, as tests are run and defect found, tester can examine the remaining residual level of risk. This supports the use of risk-based testing in determining the right moment to release the product. When it comes to the test reporting, should address risk covered and still open, as well as benefits achieved and not yet achieved. The like comparison of these things will definitely give you a lot of important information which will add inputs in order to further continue your testing or showcase to your customer with respect to what you have achieved and what you have not achieved and what you'll be delivering them quite later or probably the customer can also make necessary decisions in order to finally release the product. For an example of reporting test results based on the risk coverage. Finally, during the test closure, the test manager should evaluate matrix and success criteria which are pertinent to the needs and expectation of the testing stakeholder. Now, including the customer's and user's needs and expectations in terms of the quality. So, of course, that generally we include, but just wanted to add a piece of information there which will definitely help you to understand better. Only when testing satisfies all these needs and expectations can a test team claim to be very truly effective. But at the end of the day, when you finally generate all your outcomes, you determine based on the retrospective outcomes or discussions between the different team members and all the data which you collected throughout the testing life cycle will determine that whether, whether it satisfies all these conditions or not, whether you promised uh, the things which you delivered or it you promise something which you could not deliver. So of course, these things will finally determine whether you're truly, uh, you know, were effective at that point of time or not. Probably, you know, you do plan for some of the things, but at the end, you do not deliver that. That's where your effect allocation does not value. So you need to make sure that whatever you're doing, it meets the expectation and showcases that your effort were value added in terms of delivering the product on time with the quality which you promised. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.